up guys Trey coming back at your screen by means of the World Wide Web and today we are going to get into the prize highlight for the numero uno special dungeon event here so starting off with our hot relics um, we have the brazed labrys which evolves into the blue eyed labrys um, these two pieces of gear guys are nothing really special I mean the blue eyed labrys is better than quite a few pieces of attack gear but um it only has smash adept so um if you already got yourselves quite a few twin sawtooths five for five maxed out um there's really no need to even worry about these labrys axes um they are really nothing special but um the next one we have here the hilted rod which evolves to the two in hand um that hilted rod is nothing special 877 attack is decent but it has no skill until you evolve it to the two in hand and then once you do that it gets a whopping 1512 attack which is a considerable amount um it has stampede elite which is also decent um for some reason I've been hearing a lot of people complain about the gear in this dungeon and I don't understand why because the two in hand I mean unless I'm misunderstanding something the two in hand looks like a really good piece of gear on um, 1512 attack stampede elite so it got the high multiplier single target um so unless I'm missing something guys the other three are not really anything special but the two in hand is pretty nice and I'm pretty certain that's going to be the reward for completing Harpy's Horde this time around. So, um, I'm definitely going to be going for that. And, like I said, unless I'm missing something, that's a good piece of gear. I understand the other three, but this thing is looks pretty nice, guys. So, um, uh, moving right along to our dungeon heroes. Alright, guys. So, let me just tell you right off the bat here. The fighters in this dungeon event, as we all know, are pretty horrible. Um... They're really nothing to shake a stick at. And because of that fact, we are going to do things a little bit differently this time around on our prize highlights video. Um, I will not be doing any comparisons whatsoever. I'm not comparing anyone. And the reason that is, is because this event is basically full of super fuse fodder. There isn't a single fighter that I would recommend anyone take away from this event and actually use in their band. I would not recommend any of them unless you are a straight up beginner class one just fresh to the game then okay you know you can use these guys but if you're even above class 10 just get rid of these things sell them there, there's something better I don't mean that literally but unless you're extremely new to this game I do not recommend any of these fighters guys because I can tell you right up front anybody who's been playing this game for a while agrees with me on the fact that this event is just full of super fuse fodder so on that note basically all I'm gonna do is tell you what I think about these fighters my opinion personally and then I'm going to consider how they're or what I'm going to talk about their super fusion stats basically anything that gives you at least 400 on the super fuse I will let you know about it it's basically all I'm doing this event so Let's get right into it, starting with Asterisk, Asteriskos, um, the Sethry recolor, big black boxer here. Um, he is a Lightning Warlock with Shock Elite, two cooldown, nothing special there. Um, he's a Warlock, of course, so he has the attack, he has the wisdom, and so-so HP. But um, nothing new on the cooldown, it's not that great, the skill isn't new. Um, I do like his look better than Sethra just because I personally think black is a better color than blue. But that's about the only difference. So um, this guy for Super Fuse guys, you you would find him to be decent for attack and wisdom. Um, if you were to Super Fuse him for attack, you would get 497. If you were to use wisdom, you would get 453. Alright, that's it for him. Moving on to the next one, we're going to be talking about, about Araskus. Um, Erascus is a fire champ. Um, I'm not too crazy about his look, honestly. I think he's actually kind of ugly. So, um, 
Yeah, he's a champ though, so he's gonna have heightened HP, heightened attack, so so defense. Um, smash all the depth with a three cooldown, nothing new there. That's pretty much about average for that skill. Um, cooldown of three. So, since he's a champ, um, this guy is actually pretty nice super fuse for the guys. Um, if you were to super fuse him for HP, you would get 540. If you were to use for attack, you would get 618. So, um, this guy's probably going to cost a little bit, guys, because of the fact that he's pretty decent super fuse fodder for HP and attack. Um, he's up there around Melpamine, who is pretty high end super fuse fodder. So, this guy's going to be a little bit pricey. Um, not too, too expensive, but um, I'm guessing he's going to cost around Melpamine's price, which is around 15 to 20. Um, I'm guessing Erascus is going to be around that area as well, maybe a little bit less. But uh, be on the lookout for him if you need HP and attack fodder, guys. Alright, moving on to basically the superstar for this event. I mean, she's nothing special either, but if you were to take a fighter away from this one, this would be the best one for you because she is an Earth Rogue. Um, so she's going to have the agility for sure. And this is agility-based preemptor, guys, so she's not going to have much attack. She's going to have the agility, and um, she's an auto proc preempt, which is another reason why she'd be the best fighter to take away from here. But um, like I said, still nothing to really shake a stick at. Um, if I don't really care for her look, she looks like their DNAs and Mobazes, um depiction of Medusa, with the snake dreads and all of that. But um. Anyway, the only stat worth considering here is her agility. If you need agility super fuse fighter guys, you can get 587 from Tremarine. So um, she's not going to be too expensive at all, I'm guessing. Um, maybe somewhere around 6, 7, 8 bidders a piece. Um, my guess for that. But she's only useful in agility. Um, I wouldn't really mess with her for any other reason. Alright, moving on to Inmasara. Um, I really like this guy's look, which is unfortunate because um, statistically he is garbage. <laughs> um, he has super low HP, 2351. That is very low. Um, but he's a fire warlock, so he has the attack and he has the wisdom. Um, 5,470 attack, 5,193 wisdom. Scorch all the depth with a cooldown of 3, um, which is basically also average for that skill. So nothing special there. Um, you can use this guy for attack or wisdom superfuse fodder, in which you would get 656 on the attack and 623 on the wisdom. Um, this guy is probably going to be a little pricey as well, guys, because he's pretty decent higher end superfuse fodder for attack and wisdom, which is nice. So um, he's going to cost a pretty penny, I'm guessing. Um, if I had to guess, uh, maybe somewhere around nine to eleven bidders each for this guy I'm um, just my guess I could be completely wrong so don't take these prices that I'm quoting in stone guys please don't make that mistake I don't know what they're gonna cost at the end of the day I'm kinda just thinking in my head of you know what the super fuse fodder around his area costs now and basically taking it from there so um, that's my guess but he's pretty nice super fuse fodder guys 656 attack is formidable as well as 623 wisdom. All right, the next one, guys. If you're looking for super fuse fodder, this is the king of this event, hands Dizal, Mr. Oostpoloi. Um, he is an Earth champ, so he's gonna have the attack, the defense, and the super duper Omega HP. Oh my goodness, this guy has crazy HP. Um, his skills, ground elite, two cooldown, pretty much average for that. So nothing special there. Um, if you wanted to super fuse this guy, he gets 417 attack, 455 defense, and a whopping, outstanding 934 HP. That is incredible. Um, this guy is hands down. Um, to my knowledge, the highest HP super fuse fodder for an epic. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm pretty sure there's nothing better than that right now. Um, I'm not 100%, but I'm certain. I'm feeling kind of good that it isn't. So um, if you need HP fodder, guys, this is your man. 
The only problem is I'm pretty sure this guy's going to be expensive. I'm thinking this guy's going to be really expensive. Um, I'm I'm guessing at this, but I definitely don't think he's going to be no less than about 15 to 20 bidders per self. So um, if you can afford this guy, he will do you a ton of good. But um, I'm guessing he's going to be really expensive, and that's going to be the problem with acquiring this guy. So if you ain't already sitting on a ton of bidders, or maybe you have some fighters you want to get rid of, it's not going to be too good, guys. So, um, But he's really good. If you can't afford him, I highly recommend you use this guy for HP fodder. Um, he is just, he's, he's it. He's that guy. And last but not least, we have this contraption here known as a Lulu. Um, by the way, I do like Uspaloy's look. I don't think I said that. I do like it. I think he has a really nice sprite. But a Lulu, I don't know what this disease is here. This thing is like a strain of virus or something. It looks really super duper ugly. Um, horrible sprite. And for a horrible fighter, um, the sprite doesn't make sense to me. And neither does the fighter or its stats. And here is why, guys. Do you remember Uber the big red dragon from a... Dungeon event we had. Um, it was a few, it was a few dungeon events ago. Uberatu, the big red dragon warlock, had counter. Um, that was a fighter that didn't make sense to me, and so is this fighter right here. When I saw these stats, I instantly thought of Uberatu. Um, so Ilulu is a water rogue. She has Sting all the depth, which is an agility based cooldown skill. If you watched my first impressions video, you saw my first impression of when I saw these stats, and it has not changed. This fighter just freaking blows my mind. Um, I honestly don't know what the deal is, but if the if the skill is sting all the depth and based off agility, please tell me why this rogue only has 2,593 agility, because I just don't get it. Um, that is ultra horrible. Now, Sting all the Depth cooldown to 2, that's pretty average for that skill. But 2,593 agility, that junk ain't gonna do nothing. It it will literally, a freaking Babak would be able to survive that attack. Like, honestly, that is horrible. Um, and he, this Rogue has really high attack coming in at 5449. And it also has even a considerable amount of wisdom at 3586. So, why they made a rogue's stats like this, I don't understand. Um, especially one with Sting All, who's based off of agility. I mean, the, honestly, the only thing I can think of is if you were to superfuse a Lulu with agility, um, it could hit hard. It could hit hard and then have high attack. But just be careful because the low HP, it'll be gone in no time. That thing will be dead before you even swipe. <laughs> So, um, yeah, this fighter is just weird. Looks weird. Stats are weird. Everything is just weird about this guy. But, if you wanted to use him for Super Fuse Fighter, you can get 653 attack and 430 wisdom. And that's about it. So, there we have it, guys. Our prize highlights for Numero Uno. Um, why they call this dungeon Numero Uno, I don't know. There's nothing number one about it. It's really horrible. But, um... Here we have it. I see a lot of people really ain't competing because I'm not even doing much and I'm ranking really high. So, um, it is what it is. But thank you guys for watching this. Please continue to like, favorite, subscribe, share, comment, and everything else. And I will be back at your screen with more Defender of Texas videos soon, guys. Later.